Good morning, Dougie guy. My name is Emma Hira. We can start the warm-up session. What made you choose nursing as a career? I have always had a strong desire to help others, and nursing allows me to do just that in a meaningful way. I find fulfillment in providing comfort, support, and care to individuals during their most vulnerable moments. Nursing also offers diverse opportunities for continuous learning and professional growth, which I value greatly. How do you handle stressful situations or high-pressure environments? I've developed effective coping strategies to manage stress and thrive in demanding situations. Firstly, I prioritize self-care by maintaining a healthy work-life balance and engaging in activities like exercise and mindfulness to recharge. Additionally, I rely on my strong communication and problem-solving skills to collaborate with colleagues and prioritize tasks efficiently. Staying organized and adaptable helps me remain calm and focused, even during challenging times. Can you describe a difficult patient care situation you've encountered and how you handled it? In one instance, I cared for a patient who was experiencing severe pain and anxiety due to a complex medical condition. Despite administering medication, the patient's discomfort persisted, and their distress escalated. I took a compassionate approach, actively listening to the patient's concerns and advocating for additional pain management interventions. I collaborated closely with the healthcare team to adjust the treatment plan, ensuring the patient's comfort and well-being were prioritized. By providing empathetic care and advocating for the patient's needs, we were able to alleviate their pain and improve their overall experience. How do you stay updated on current nursing practices and developments in healthcare? I'm committed to lifelong learning and staying abreast of advancements in nursing and healthcare. I regularly attend professional development seminars, workshops, and conferences to expand my knowledge base and learn from industry experts. Additionally, I actively engage in evidence-based practice by reading reputable nursing journals, participating in online forums, and seeking out opportunities for continuing education. By staying informed and adaptable, I can deliver the highest standard of care to my patients and contribute positively to the nursing profession. How do you ensure effective communication with patients and their families? I prioritize clear and empathetic communication by actively listening, addressing concerns, and tailoring my approach to individual needs. By fostering open dialogue, I aim to create a supportive environment where patients and families feel empowered and valued.
You can now start your OET roleplay. Good morning, my name is Dougie Guy. One of the community nurses here. How can I assist you today? Hello, nurse. I'm quite worried about my baby. He's been having some skin issues, and I'm not sure what to do. I see, don't worry. We are here to help you. How may I address you? You can call me Mihira. Mihira, could you tell your baby's age and name, please? His name is Rob, and he is just one month old. Thank you for the details, Mihira. Let's get to the bottom of this. Could you tell me more about what you've been noticing with your baby's skin? Yes, well, it started a few days ago. I noticed some yellowish, greasy patches on his scalp, and they seem to be spreading a bit. I've never seen anything like it before. Okay, how does that affect your baby? Any discomforts noticed? Baby is fine, it is not causing any irritations for him so far. Thank you for sharing that with me. Based on your description, it does appear to be a cradle cap, a condition where excess skin oil mixes with dead skin cells on the scalp. It's quite common in infants, and usually nothing to be alarmed about. The reassuring thing is that the cradle cap typically resolves on its own, as your baby's skin matures, usually by around 6 to 12 months of age. So, while it might look concerning now, rest assured that it's a temporary issue that will likely clear up as your baby grows. Nurse, I appreciate your insight, but I have a feeling it might be eczema instead. Mihira, I understand your concern, and it's completely natural to consider different possibilities. However, based on what you've described about your baby's symptoms, it aligns more closely with cradle cap rather than eczema. Cradle cap typically presents as white or yellowish scales, and may appear as crusty or greasy patches on the scalp. Importantly, it's generally non-irritating to your baby. On the other hand, eczema tends to manifest as red, inflamed patches that can be itchy or weepy. While both conditions can cause distress, the presentation you've described, along with the absence of significant irritation, suggests a cradle cap as the more likely diagnosis. I hope this clarifies your concern. Do you have any other concerns or questions, Mihira? That makes sense. But will it go away on its own? Is there anything I can do to help manage it? Mihira, I understand that managing your baby's condition is important to you, so let me share some ways to help alleviate the discomfort associated with cradle caps. Firstly, you can gently apply a small amount of baby oil or coconut oil to the affected areas of your baby's scalp. This helps to soften the scales, making them easier to remove. Then, using a soft brush, such as a baby hairbrush or a soft toothbrush, gently massage the scalp in circular motions to loosen the scales. During bath time, you can use a tear-free medicated shampoo specifically designed for infants. This shampoo helps to cleanse the scalp and remove any excess oil or scales. Be sure to rinse thoroughly with warm water and pat the scalp dry gently afterward. Consistency and gentleness are key when managing cradle cap. By following these steps regularly, you can help improve your baby's comfort and gradually reduce the appearance of the scales. Thank you so much for the advice, nurse. I feel much better knowing what's going on and how to manage it. You're welcome, Mihira. By the way, before concluding, let me summarize what we have discussed so far. We've addressed your concerns about Rob's skin issues, which appear to be consistent with the cradle cap based on the yellowish, greasy patches on his scalp. Despite your initial worry about eczema, the absence of significant irritation suggests the cradle cap is the more likely diagnosis. It's important to note that the cradle cap usually resolves on its own, as Rob grows older, typically by around 6 to 12 months of age. We've discussed gentle management strategies, including applying baby oil or coconut oil to soften the scales, and using a soft brush to gently massage the scalp. Additionally, using a tear-free medicated shampoo during bath time can help remove excess oil and scales. Consistency and patience are key in managing this condition. 
I'm glad I could provide you with guidance on how to care for Rob's cradle cap. If you have any other concerns, or if you notice any changes or the condition worsens, feel free to reach out to us again. I will, thank you nurse.